This is how you create dynamic cutout borders for input fields with component props. If I select all the input fields here, you're gonna see this uh, little uh, field where it says label that is a component prop that I can change to whatever, whatever I want and all the labels will change with it. These ones are a little bit too small, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So how do you do this? It's actually not that hard. It's a little bit hacky, but it works really well. Um, the only thing that you won't be able to do, you won't be able to have a auto layout, which will resize dynamically hugging the component, the, the contents inside, but um, it will be resizable and you can fill the space. And usually input fields are not dynamic um, or I mean, hugging the, the contents anyway. So before I start, I wanna give a shout out to uh, Andre for sharing the tip on Twitter. Although this video was pretty quick, his master in Figma, so like I had to rewatch it a couple times to see everything he was doing. And then I decided to try it myself with a little bit of uh, trial and error. I was able to do it and it's really not that hard. And the other shout out I would like to give is to Luca, just because I'm using his design as a reference here uh, because I thought it was uh, pretty cool. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, we first wanna create rectangle for the border and let's change the, the fill into a stroke by hitting shift X. And I'm gonna choose, let's see what color I, I picked for the stroke here. It doesn't matter, we can just do it, let's say CCC. All right, so I'm just gonna get the sizes from here. So it's an 80 pixel height. And then, let's see, now I'm gonna change the border radius to 24. Okay, so this is basically how we're gonna have the border and then we just need to use a mask to cut it out. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna wrap, actually I'm gonna rename this to outline. Well, let's say just call it border. And next we'll need the text. I'm just gonna grab one of these. So it's easier to gonna paste here so this is just a plain text as you can see oops it's there we go by the way if you're trying to select something that is locked uh, that's what I did there if I locked it again is if you hold control on the Mac and right click you're gonna see this little all the a list of all the layers for example if I do that here I see all the main layers um, yeah so I can select that and uh, command shift L to unlock it so now I just have the same size that I used there, so I know it looks nice. Uh, and this is 40 by 20, so I'm gonna make another rectangle that is 40 by 20. Not 420, 40 by 20. Okay, so the label in the background here, I'll just call this cutout. If I try to make an auto layout here right now, it's gonna remove the cutout and Figma is gonna think that you wanna create just uh, like a button or something. So it's gonna remove that to make the, the layer panel cleaner so it will disappear. And what we want is actually to keep that for this case. Most of the times you, we, we don't wanna have a rectangle just for the background, but in this case, since we're gonna use it as, as a mask, we want it. So I'm just gonna duplicate it twice so it auto layout's not gonna think that it's like, oh, this person is just trying to do a background with the rectangle and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna select the auto layout and remove the fill. So you can see it removed the fill here and this is our rectangle, our cutout. I'm gonna move it to the bottom and I'm gonna make that an absolute positioning. So um, now I'm gonna press option W to align within the auto layout that it was set before to wrap the text. Okay, so now actually I'm just gonna change the order of the auto layout to first on top, so it matches the layer panel here. All right, so now here we are almost there. I'm just gonna label, this is gonna be our mask. So I'm gonna label that um, layer mask, label mask, and I'm gonna just duplicate this 
And now I want to remove the cutout. So I just want, for this one, I just want the label because this is going to be not the mask. This is going to be the one that is um, the actual label that you see, the one that you see over here. I'm going to align both of these by hitting Command W. Sorry, not Command W, that's going to close your file. It was uh, Option W. Um, and then I'm going to wrap this into a frame. Remember I said at the beginning, no auto layout. And then I'm going to select both of these labels and drag it inside the frame. So is it inside? No. Now it is. Okay. Select both again. Stay inside. There we go. So here I want to do 20 pixels from the left. Let's make sure that everything inside the frame here. Yep. I'm going to name the frame input. Okay. Now the fun part. I'm gonna hide the top one. And now we just have the label mask. All we have to do is select the label mask, select the border and hit subtract. And that cut out um, the thing still here. One thing that happened here when I did that is that it removed the padding for some reason, but we still wanna keep that. So I'm gonna, um, oh, actually, I think I forgot to add the padding before, right? Yep, I forgot. So that doesn't matter because we just need to add it now. So I'm going to unhide the label. And with both of them selected, I want to add four, uh, 8 pixel padding on left and right. So um, the bottom one, for some reason, didn't. Like you can see here, something got messed up. So I'm going to hide the top one. And oh, I see what happened. So the, the cutout is not. Uh, it's not pinned to or glued to all the sides on the constraints here. So I can actually, I will undo the padding to zero. So it's touching all the sides and I'm gonna come in here, hold shift and click in all the little lines over there. And then now when I add the eight pixel uh, padding here, it's gonna work because it's like the, the cutouts going all the way to the end of the auto layout. So now I'm going to show this again and it's working as expected. Okay. So we have our input here. It's not a component yet. And if you try to edit this, it's not going to work as you expect. And you're like, what the hell? It should work. Where the magic happens here is when we make this into a component. So I'm just going to hit command option K. I made that into a component now. And actually, I'm gonna just steal some of these texts just for, so I have something to put inside here. I'm gonna name this input new because the other one's also named input in here. All right, so we got the text in here. I'm gonna add an auto layout. So when I edit, uh, since this is only a frame, it's not an auto layout. I'm gonna wrap this into an auto layout. I'm just gonna say input text. Uh, I'm doing this because when I edit this, I want the CM, the centimeters to move. And now all I have to do is say that I want the text to wrap or to hug. And now when I type, you know, cause the numbers will have different widths, like if you write ones or zeros, they have different widths. So that's how you can make that part um, be a little bit dynamic. And then just make sure that this is pinned to the center. So it's always in the center of that box. Um, and then now all we need to do for it to work is basically select the label text here and open the label mask. Select both of the label text uh, layers. And I'm gonna remove this just because it came from that component. So now it's naked. So again, I selected both the text layers named the label. One is inside the mask. Remember, this is a subtract. It's like the border. So I'm selecting both, not the auto layout, just the layer. And then when you come over here, when the text is inside a com uh, component now, with the component props, you will see this little thing over here. And if we create a text property, now we can lay, you, you can link 
the same property to multiple text layers. So that's what we're doing here. That's how it's gonna work. So I'm gonna name this label, I guess label text. And then the value will, the value here, the default is the default value that you see on the component. When you, when you drag the component from the library, what do you see on the label text uh, prop? So if I change this label to, you're gonna see that it's gonna change there or labels. Create property, see it changed there now. So if I go back to the component here and I edit the property, I don't want it to be plural. So I'm just gonna change that back. Okay, so now if we use an instance of that, you see over here, label text, uh, now we can just change that to whatever we want and voila, and now it's working as you would expect and it's also resizable here <laughs> or it should be, so we're going to fix that now. So we go to the subtract and we make sure that that's uh, actually not subtract. If we if we pin at this to all the corners, look at what's gonna happen here. Actually, you know, we'll go back because this got messed up. If I go back here to subtract, if we pin this one to all the sides, it's gonna be messed up. Oh, already, like, that's why, that's what happened there. When I, when I select to pin it, see it's like getting weird. What you have to go is like on the border, which is like the first uh, layer we created. This is the one that we wanna pin to all the sides. So now when I resize it, it's gonna be as you expect here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then now you can also have the control, like if you add a, a variant to this, you can go to the border and just change it to let's like, say two pixels like I did there. And um, if you change the color here, it's, nothing's gonna change because it's part of a uh, uh, union or a subtract property here. So you have to change the color on that property. Um, and let's change that to the purple. And then let's do the same with the text. But here, let's say if I if I change the text to bold here, I have to also change the text that's inside the mask. So the, the mapping will, will work as you would expect. So I'm gonna go here and select the label as well and make this into semi-bold. And also turn this into the purple. Cool, so now when it's an active state, it will become purple. Um, okay, so now all we need to do is just rename this to state and then name this to active. Now we have two states here, the active state and the default state and the label that will change to whatever you need and it's really cool because you can do, like I showed earlier, you could resize this, or you can just, if it's inside of auto layout, you can just set, set to fill the container and you can do that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions in the, in the comments below. I'm gonna put the link to this file in the description. And if you like this, if you learn anything, please make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.